Well, good evening, and uh, a warm welcome to you. It's definitely as warm, isn't it? But it's not too hot, which is good. Um, the way the service works is all the words appear on the screen, uh, so hopefully you can read it. And uh, the music, hopefully you know, but if you don't know, just listen to it. There's a, a vocal on all of the tracks. And uh, generally we join in in the bits which are in bold and uh, not in the bits which aren't in bold. Uh, but it should be reasonably clear because Sue or I will introduce and say please join in. Uh, so that should be um, straightforward enough. And uh, hopefully it's an opportunity just to gather some thoughts and uh, allow God to touch us and bless us. So uh, shall we join together in this welcome? Welcome to our church, to what we want to be a family of love. Welcome to familiar faces. Welcome to first timers. Welcome to the old and the young and the somewhere in betweens. Welcome to a place of warm friendship, acceptance and fun. Welcome to a space for silence and solitude. Welcome to a place for joy and laughter. Welcome to an encounter with the unchanging, abundant, steadfast love of God. His generous banquet is lovingly prepared with you in mind. Welcome to the silly and the serious, the honest and the pretending, the lonely and the crowded. Welcome to those who need to be held and those who need to be released. Welcome as you are, a precious part of God's family. Welcome to our church. Come, let us meet Jesus in him we see God. Let us seek his presence as a friend. Let us follow him for his way is life and truth. He will bring us where we need to be to do God's work and to be God's people. Lord Jesus, we come together in your presence. We ask for courage to take steps towards places we cannot yet see and do things we cannot even imagine and could not do without you. Help us all to help each other as we travel that path and follow you. Amen. And our first song is possibly one that you don't know, but uh, do just listen to it uh, and join in as you get to know it. Or if you do know it, uh, sing along as, as much you want.
And now a reading from the Gospel of Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began telling his followers that he must go to Jerusalem, where the Jewish elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of the law would make him suffer many things. He told them he must be killed and then be raised from the dead on the third day. Peter took Jesus aside and told him not to talk like that. He said, God save you from those things, Lord. Those things will never happen to you. Then Jesus said to Peter, Go away from me, Satan. You are not helping me. You don't care about the things of God but only about the things people think are important. Then Jesus said to his followers, if people want to follow me, they must give up the things they want. They must be willing even to give up their lives to follow me. Those who want to save their lives will give up true life, and those who give up their lives for me will have true life. It is worthless to have the whole world if they lose their souls. They could never pay enough to buy back their souls. The Son of Man will come again with his Father's glory and with his angels. At that time, he will reward them for what they have done. I tell you the truth. Some people standing here will see the Son of Man coming with his kingdom before they die. Uh, I'm uh, standing in front of the camera so that it can be recorded so that we put this service on the uh, internet so anybody else who wants to join in can join in from home if they want to. Uh, so um, let's just pray. Dear Lord, we ask that as we think about what you said and how you lived, so it may help us to live our lives well. Amen. So uh, the Christian faith is built on really something quite different from most other faiths. Uh, somebody who lived a very short time, said some very important things, and then died and rose again and uh, then went to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit to us so that we might live his life. And this idea that he dies and rises again uh, is absolutely central to the Christian faith and absolutely central to what he was teaching us and what he was trying to get us to understand about uh, how we live and what our expectation should be for this life and the life to come. In Jesus' time, there were uh, people like there are today who both believed that uh, there was a life after this life and others who believed that there wasn't. And Jesus very firmly was of the camp that uh, there is something that we live in the new life, in heaven, in a place that uh, we do not know where it is. Uh, yet he says that he knows it because he came from it and is able to lead us there. And he lived this very short life and gave one to his followers, the Holy Spirit, to uh, empower them. And they've affected the whole world with his message, which in many ways is very radical compared to those around about him and has been uh, very effective in uh, producing much good as well as also being used uh, for much bad by people who've uh, wrongly understood him, I would per se and believe, and we have to confess that uh, as the church that sometimes those things that have been done in the name of Christ were not the things that Christ would want to have been done in his name. Uh, but he uh, encourages us to be those who give of ourselves like he did, uh, but not necessarily uh, by dying, but by dying to our own selfishness, because our own selfishness both traps us and uh, holds us back from being, finding fullness of life and an ability to create a community that is full of love and compassion 
full of kindness, full of transforming power and effectiveness. Because if we just focus in on ourselves and our own our families as much of the peoples of his time and many people since then and many people today do, then you don't discover how to really transform society, how to make those who are destitute better, how to uh, bring and value all people, how to make sure that a community is created and how to uh, bring healing and hope where things have gone wrong. If we say, I've never gone wrong and don't admit to our weaknesses and failures, then we create a society that um, isn't true and we need God's help to overcome our weaknesses and failures, but we also need the reality that he accepts us and does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. So he dies on our behalf uh, for what we might have been punished for, uh, for the things that we've done wrong. And he sets us free to uh, follow him and to live lives that are empowered by, as that song was teaching us, the power of his love, the love that uh, holds each one of us as wonderful and beautiful even though we're flawed and not yet what we want to be. As people who are able to go forward on his strength and the strength and support of others to uh, live lives which are more than just lives for ourselves, lives that do something for our families, for our community, for the wider world and lives which are uh, powerful in bringing hope and healing because the word gospel that Sue used for the story of Jesus was good news and the story that Jesus comes with is a story of good news where, where restitution is brought into being and where vengeance is not uh, the continual cycle of destruction that is so often the way that the world where we say I'm going to forgive you rather than I'm going to get back and I'm going to get you back for what you've done. So when Jesus asks us to take up our cross, to give up of ourselves, he's not asking us to completely destroy ourselves and to end up dead. Uh, because indeed, he rises again and he knew he was going to rise again. He didn't expect death to be the end. But he asks us to die to those things which are trapping us, which are holding us back from being able to be something more and to grow in the ways that are uh, helpful to us and to others and uh, the central teaching that he was asked when you know what is the most important part of the law he uh, says to love your neighbor as yourself there is always this balance in what we are to do as Christians where we love our neighbor as ourselves we don't put ourselves up and above others we don't uh, make ourselves uh, lower than others but we love our neighbor as ourselves, and we know that God loves us and values us because his son was willing to die for us so that we might have life and a fuller life than we would have had without it. We pray that God may help us to know his Holy Spirit enabling us and strengthening us and we might know the power of his love and the ability to live our lives in ways that are more than they might have been if we just live for ourselves. Amen. What we usually do after I've tried to give you something to think about is have a, a song which enables us to have a bit of reflection and the idea is often that you just listen to it but you can sing along. This one is an old hymn so uh, you may well uh, know the words and the uh, uh, as, as they were written by Edward Moat in sometime in the 19th century uh, but uh, if not you might just like to listen to them or you might want to sing along if you feel that that's what you'd like to do. And it starts uh, straight off when I start the music, so there's no introduction. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I 
And now we come to our time of prayer. Do please join in with the sentences in bold. When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us admit our failures and weaknesses. Faithful God, forgive us when, as your people, the cross of commitment has felt too heavy for us to carry, and we have let you and those around us down. Grant, Grant us faith, faith courage, courage, and, and humility. humility. Forgive us when the cost of following your Son in our daily lives has felt too risky. Grant, Grant us, us faith, faith courage, courage, and, and humility. humility. Forgive us when we are reluctant to go beyond our comfort zone and embrace those situations that challenge us. Grant, Grant us faith, faith courage, courage, and humility. humility. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Eternal God. Your forgiveness enables us to begin again when we have come to the end of our own strength. It enables us to overcome our mistakes as Peter did when he got things badly wrong. It enables us to see more clearly the cost of following your son and to receive more fully the blessing of your presence with us through conflict, through challenge and through change. Amen. Lord God, you reproached Peter because he had only human concerns. But Peter just wanted to protect the one he loved. We pray for people the world over who find themselves in difficult situations. We pray that they would all have someone to care for them and lift them before you. We trust you, Lord, to answer our prayers. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are persecuted for their faith, for all who are misunderstood, for asylum seekers who flee real danger in their homeland. We pray for those who work tirelessly to address wrongs. We trust you, Lord, to answer our prayers. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We pray for people 
whose lives don't always work out right, through their fault or through no fault of their own. We trust you, Lord, to answer our prayers. Merciful, Merciful God, God, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the people in our lives who need your protection, Lord, that we will always be faithful in prayer for them. We trust you, Lord, to answer our prayers. Merciful God, hear, hear our prayer. And the, uh, Jesus, when he taught the Lord's Prayer, uh, probably taught it in very simple Aramaic, so we've got a version that we use uh, which is in uh, very simple English, uh, trying to capture that first version of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, if you find it difficult to use, just let it uh, be said rather than join in, or if you prefer, do join in. Our Dad in heaven above, let everyone look up to you and the area where you are in charge grow. May what you want happen on earth as perfectly as it does in heaven. Please give to us what we need for today. Forgive us when we think or do wrong things, just as we don't hold it against those who hurt us. Guide us away from whatever we might want, but is unhelpful to us, and protect us from all that is nasty and destructive. For you are in charge of everything, you have the power to do it, and you are awesome. You always were, you are now, and always will be. Amen. And our final song is another uh, more modern song, My Jesus, My Saviour. Uh, do, as I say again, join if, if, as you get to know it, or just listen to it. Jesus, my Savior. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you.
blue screen of death. <laughs> Don't know why the computer decided to crash. Ah, oh, here we are. And now, let's join in this final prayer together. Let's just pray. Lord, we ask that as we go forward, you may indeed guide us and help us. Help us to live our lives well for ourselves and for those around about us, for our families, for our wider community, and for the good of your world. We pray that you may strengthen us to be able to know where we need to leave things that are important to us aside so that things are important to you and the rest of the world may be able to be achieved and know where you would want us to be able to love ourselves and do those things which are important to sustain and keep us so that we may have the energy to do the work that you would want we ask this in Jesus name Amen May the blessing of God be with us all and all those whom we love this day and evermore. Amen. We have a piece of music just to reflect as we spend a few moments with our own thoughts at the end of the service. <laughs>